Hello and welcome to Shelby Township Parks and Recreation in the News. I'm Joe Youngblood. With us today is Mike Adams from the Parks and Recreation Department. In our show, we'll be making our residents updated with all the latest and greatest happenings here in Shelby Township Parks and Recreation and special events. Mike, uh, summer is kind of winding down. And, yes, it uh, is. With that brings the winding down of the summer season baseball. Mm -hmm. One thing I'd like to add before we get into that is with the summer season, it's great to play baseball when it's 70, 80, even 90 degrees as opposed to 30 in, the 30 in snow and sleet and your hands are numb. So uh, how's the second season going, summer ball? This is the fourth year we're doing it. Mm -hmm. Great feedback. Um, Knock on wood, everything's running really smooth. It is, it's running really good. Um, we do have a little different than our spring seasons because we can bring a, a lot of non-residents into our program. So like I always say, the, the players in the spring, they have cousins or friends right. that live outside of the township can come in. So our numbers are just growing every year. Sure. And uh, it, it's been one of the smoothest seasons so, so far. I like to thank all the coaches, definitely. Summertime is busy for everybody. I know it's a, it's a time commitment, so I do want to thank all the coaches that definitely. help out. Um, kind of winding down, uh, last couple of weeks of regular season, we're getting ready for the big playoff yeah. push here uh, right around, uh, right before Labor Day. The other nice draw it seems to be is most communities have the spring season, mm -hmm. but it doesn't seem like there's that many that have a summer baseball season. And that seems yeah. to work out really well, except for drawing people on the community, because people want to play during the summer. Yeah, like you said, you know, it, it, the weather's good, um, it does get a little hot, but I think people prefer that versus the 30 degrees in April, like you said. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just been really good. Um, of course, we got great fields here in the township. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not sure why more communities don't offer the, the summer season. Maybe because the first season is such a long season and um, we, we have tons of teams for our spring season. You know, maybe they just don't have the field capabilities, but since we do have the fields here, we offer it and it's it just been going great. Yeah, definitely. So, well, great job uh, heading, heading up the league Thanks. and it has been going really well. So it's always nice to hear. And if we have any residents that uh, are interested just remember for 2016 if you uh, you can play spring baseball season and you can play the summer baseball season or one or the other but uh, you can start looking at the newsletter around January for uh, registration uh, for that for the spring and summer baseball uh, season. Uh, Mike we have a few different uh, events coming up in the township uh, uh, one I'd like to touch on to, to get started here is the Jingle Bell Run now I know that's uh, a little ways off but it, people like to plan ahead. Maybe it's for their training yep. or just put on the calendar. But Sunday, December 13th, uh, 2015 at 9 o'clock a.m. is the Jingle Bell Run. And this is headed up by Mike Ward, who heads up most of the races here uh, in Shelby Township and does a great job. Uh, the benefits, uh, the proceeds will go to Macomb County Special Olympics, uh, Penrickton Center, Cattail Acres, Shelby Township Veterans, and the Shelby Township Lions. We also have another race that's coming up uh, a little bit sooner than that is the Veterans Memorial Run, and that's a 5K run, 5K walk, Sunday, November 8th, 2015, at high noon. And you can register for this. Contact um, Supervisor's Office in Shelby Township at 731-5154. So those are a couple different races that we have coming up. And speaking of races, um, Mike, we have a lot of trails here in Shelby Township. Oh, yeah. And we've had uh, been in contact recently with some local groups because we're applying for different grant monies. Um, if you've been over to Riverbends Park, you'll see the Riverbends Park to Utica Trail. The construction is ongoing at this time. Completion date of this fall, November 15th, is the slated complete completion date. This is all part of the Iron Bell Trail. You may ask, what is the Iron Bell Trail? That's going the plan is to go from Iron Mountain all the way to Belle Isle. The portion that comes through Shelby Township is the trails that we're working on right now, which would lead us from the Macomb Orchard Trail uh, through Gene Shepherd Park, Holland Ponds, through River Bends Park into the city of Utica. And that trail will take you all the way um, down to Belle Isle. Uh, at least that's the plan. And that's coming from the governor's office. And that's the uh, Michigan's Iron Bell Trail. We do have brochures on this if you are interested. And Mike, speaking of trails, uh, we know in our local parks, uh, what a a big uh, quality of life improvement this is for the, the residents. You go stop by the Macomb Orchard Trail, oh, yeah. heading over to River Bends, um, and it's something, you know, we have residents that pay taxes. Of course, we get grant monies, but that money is, is not free. We get money from uh, people paying taxes. So it's great to put it to use, as I mentioned, for the quality of life. Yeah. And 
What's your feel on the the trail system here in Shelby Township? Well, McComb Archer Trail specifically, if you go there on any given day, you can see the mm -hmm. amount of people using it. And I think it's a great alternative to opposed to just walking up and down your street sure. or off a main road like Van Dyke. Um, it's just a great atmosphere. People are very friendly out there. You'll see all different people walking their dogs, um, kids in strollers. You just see a wide range of, of That's a good point. The people amount of users that can use it. Yep, and it's, it's really good. Um, I said it's a little different than walking up and down your street. Some things other communities don't have that we you know, really enjoy here. And obviously we have lots of uh, extensive trail system in our parks, but uh, in Macomb Archer Trail, um, you know, anytime that we go there, it's just unbelievable mm -hmm. the amount of use, especially during the morning and uh, afternoon hours. It's, it's really nice to see. Yeah, definitely. And if you're interested, uh, we do have brochures on the Macomb Orchard Trail. This is, has a map here that shows a whole 23 and a half mile trail, which goes from Shelby Township all the way to the city of Richmond. It's a beautiful um, ride, jog, jog or walk uh, for you. And also uh, many different types of users, as Mike had mentioned. And another user that we have has become very popular is the mountain bike trail users. This is over in Riverbends Park, and we would like to thank Cramba, which is the Clinton River Area Mountain Bike Association, for coming in and building over eight miles of trails through Riverbends Park. And not only do mountain bike users use the trail, we also have joggers and walkers, people uh, going out taking pictures, looking at birds, and just nature in general. So that's the, uh, and we have a wonderful map that they made for us. And that can be uh, picked up at the Shelby Township Parks and Recreation Department as well. It's nice to go on the trail system and have a map of the trails you are using there. Mike, switching gears a little bit, uh, you've heard a lot of talk about the Splash Park coming up in oh, Shelby yeah. Township. And we'd like to thank the Parks and Rec Committee uh, for this. We know uh, uh, I have some young kids, you have young kids. Uh, this is going to be a great addition to Gene Shepherd Park okay. and look forward to having this done. For sure. I know we, I think we mentioned it in the last show or the, the previous show, but uh, anytime we do any type of survey mm -hmm. or ask the residents what's their number one thing they want in a community, splash pads either number one or number two. Mm -hmm. um, so we're really excited. I think Gene Shepherd, that's one of our nicest parks, if not our nicest. Uh, we're doing improvements there all the time, Definitely. and I think this would be a great addition to it. Um, something kind of unique that some other communities are doing as well. but. Uh, Something maybe unique to Shelby Township, and I know people that have been here for a while have been asking for it, so we are hope it's going to be reality real soon. Yeah, and it's just a nice nice way for the kids. It's kind of like being on a playground, but getting a chance oh, yeah. to cool down, especially in these uh, July and August hot summers here in That'd Michigan. That would be nice. So, uh, we look forward to that. Uh, t raised to date, there's been $65,000 that has been raised uh, through private donations. The goal is to reach $100,000 or more. If it's more than $100,000, the splash pad could be... Uh, could be larger. So looking forward to that. And a way that you can help as a Shelby Township resident is we have a raise your glass for the Splash Park being put on by the Shelby Township Parks and Recreation Committee Foundation. And this is Friday, September 25th at the Packard Proving Grounds right here in Shelby Township. It's $60 per person or you can purchase a table of 10 for $550. And give, give us a call at Parks and Rec 731-0300 if you're interested in attending the wine tasting. Uh, it looks, looks to be a, a wonderful night. If you haven't been out to the Packard Proving Ground, it's a beautiful facility, a lot of history there. So uh, look forward to everyone that is in the community that, uh, Mike, when we have a program like this, it's great that it brings the community together when you're doing a project like this, when you're counting on the residents yep. to step up and come together and, and, and uh, do a, a program that they can be proud of. So. Kind of has that small town feeling, bring a, oh, yeah. a you know program like this together. So yeah. we will keep you updated uh, as we move along, and look forward to uh, a wonderful splash pad here in Shelby Township for years to come. Mike, we have we always talk about the youth sports, which are so important to any community. Yep. Uh, where we stand with the we have with the t-ball and soccer programs, and just give us a recap. Uh, even for next year, 2016, if somebody wants their child in the soccer or t-ball. Yep, our soccer and t-ball programs run pretty much spring through fall. We have a spring session, another summer session, and a fall session. Um, t-ball is basically ages four to six. Soccer, we have all ages from three up to age eight. Um, we uh, are unfortunately winding down with registration for the fall session right now. We do have limited openings if anyone's interested. Um, the new program that we started a couple years ago, the modified t-ball, which is very popular, half t-ball, half coach pitch, we do have openings left in that. 
and a few openings left in our fall PWT. So um, those are uh, very nice programs. If you didn't get enough spring and summer T-ball and soccer, we always have this fall session in case someone's missed a registration or maybe they are doing something different in the spring. They can uh, do that in the spring and I'll do the T-ball soccer in the fall. Very good. And Mike, um, this is a great way to get the kids started in the youth soccer and the T-ball because mm -hmm. it's in a non-competitive atmosphere. Um, at this age, you don't need to be, there's plenty of time to be very competitive. Oh, yeah. So this is a great way for the kids to learn. And I think we receive great feedback, especially the soccer, for example, when you have four kids on the side, everyone gets a chance to touch the ball. Soccer years ago, when we were growing up, we started to have 11 kids on yep. the side, you might not touch the ball. Four and four seems the way to go in soccer at the younger age. Yeah, it definitely works out, and I've coached the past couple of sessions with my son, and I think keeping that roster size down, it, it gets the kids more involved. And also on the t-ball aspect of that, over the years we've been reducing the roster size because we know baseball is a slow sport to begin with. So we've been reducing the roster size for t-ball too, where we used to put 13, 14 kids on the team. Right. Now we put 10 or 11. That's so the kids, idea. kids are always moving, mm -hmm. always hitting. They're not sitting out. We don't have four kids sitting on the bench while the other nine or 10 are out in the field. Right. Um, with the reduced roster size, it, it gets them more active and to participate a little bit more. Very good. So there you have it for some of our youth sports uh, moving forward in 2016. Give us a call if you have any more information, if you'd like any more information on that. Also, you've heard us talk about some of these races that we have here, the 5K race, 10K races, and the money that's donated to the Special Olympics. Um, since um, 1995, Shelby Township Parks and Rec has been running the Shelby Township Special Recreation Program, which benefits our Special Olympic athletes. So if you have a family member, family member, son or daughter, somebody interested, we do have a wonderful special recreation program. And here's a list of some of the activities that we do. We have dinner outings, dances, sports nights, pizza and movie nights, holiday parties, craft days, and bingo, as well as seasonal bowling, basketball, and softball leagues. And there's nominal fees that are required for this, uh, but give us a call at 731-0300 if you'd like to register your son or daughter or family member uh, for this. And Mike, I know you're involved with the program uh, as well as myself and it's, I mean, what a wonderful program. And when I say that, uh, not patting ourselves on the back, but just the way we can bring all these members together and f to see them socially interact, for them, mm -hmm. the program is wonderful. And it is a great program. Our database of this program has been growing over the years. I think we're over 125 members now. And uh, you definitely see it. My favorite by far is the bowling league. You see that growing every year. Um, yeah. last we started year, with eight, eight uh, people eight. back in, uh, so we have uh, almost 60 now. This year we have 58, <laughs> actually. That's great. Yeah, I'm sure we'll have a couple more yeah. uh, this upcoming year in September. That runs September through April, and that's a great program to go, to go watch and to administer, and it's really fun watching that. Um, as well as, as you know, our softball has been growing as well. Oh, yeah. Um, maybe getting ready to go to two teams there. Definitely. Um, so yeah, th those programs are definitely growing. And just the fun night outs, like the movie nights, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. and the bingo nights. Um, our participation ranges because they're on either a Friday or Saturday. So it might be tough on the weekend for some people. But our normal uh, base of people, we usually average about 25 to 30 people for each one of those events. Yeah, very good. So that's the Shelby Township Special Recreation Program. Give us a call if you'd like any more information or shoot us an email uh, for that. If you'd like to email us, um, well, you can email me directly as jyoungblood at shelbytwp.org. Uh, just recently, we had the Shelby Township Art Fair, and we had a wonderful weekend. And at this time, let's take a look at some footage to see what a wonderful event it was.
as you can see from the wonderful footage here at Shelby Township Cable, everyone had a wonderful time and the days were beautiful. Over at the Burgess Shadbush Nature Center, many people may not know we have teaching gardens over there. And if you want to stop by, um, we'd like to thank Diane Grantham and all her volunteers for these beautiful gardens that we have. They're just on the west side of the Nature Center. Please stop by, check it out. We also have brochures if you'd like to stop by to see exactly what you would be learning over at the teaching gardens at the Burgess Shadbush Nature Center. Mike, one of the uh, final events of the summer we have coming down in August here is the uh, Youth Fishing Derby. So. Why don't you fill us in on the, uh, the annual fishing derby? Yep, this is a, a little change. We moved it to August. Um, how many years was it in June? Over 30 years. Over 30 yeah. years. Move it to August. We're uh, excited about that change. We also shifted the time. I, th I think it was been 9 to noon almost that whole time. Moved it to 10 to 1, maybe so mom, dad, grandma, grandpa don't have to get up so early to get there. <laughs> Um, so 10 to 1, Saturday, August 29th is the annual fishing derby this year. It's for anyone ages 15 and under. Early bird gets the worm. Early right? bird gets the worm and the best spot on the lake. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, registration is real easy. It's a free event, but we do have a registration form that they have to sign. So if they want to get there 10 minutes early, fill out that form, they can start fishing right at 10 o'clock. We have tons of prizes. We have really nice prizes for the winners, but we have a lot of door prizes, almost Everybody walks out of there with something. What's some of the biggest fish you've seen caught at this event? Um, we had a, a large carp caught uh, either last year or the year before. I'm not sure the length, but um, I think it was uh, 10 to 12 pounds. Mm -hmm. uh, not during the fishing derby, but there was reports that there was a 12 to 14 pound catfish caught out of there. Um, not during the fishing derby hours. Um, I saw a six-pound pike caught out of there, and I know me and you have seen some rather large bass there. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, definitely in the three-and-a-half to four-and-a-half pound range are definitely some uh, largemouth bass in there. And what, if somebody's watching that's going to be at the fishing derby, what would you see, say has been the most successful lure <laughs> used? Um, probably a large night crawler. Um, that way you're not limiting yourself on what you can catch. So just catch. old school. Old school night, night crawler. You can catch one of those big catfish in there, the largemouth. Um, or even one of the carp. Very good. There you have the Youth Fishing Derby here in Shelby Township. Um, we also have a couple or sponsorships we'd like to thank. Christian Financial, Financial and Kirk Huth Lang in Bad Lamente for the sponsorship. Also the D Detroit Area Steel Steelheaders, which uh, they are a sponsorship every year. So thanks to the sponsors, make this a free event uh, uh, every year. And you can um, register the day of and uh, we'd love to see you out there. It's uh, going to be a beautiful day, right Mike? I certainly hope so. It hasn't rained that much on the days that we had the fishing derby, so... Well, and if it rains a little bit, they say sometimes it's yeah. better for fishing. Yeah, I think uh, I've done the fishing derby 12 or 13 years and it's only rained one time, but whatever, people have a good time out there, it's rain or shine. Very good. Well, there you have it from the Shelby Township Parks and Recreation in the news. Please remember here at Shelby Township Parks and Recreation, we create community. Through people.